Hello, my beautiful babies, and welcome to Children of Dune Club, session six. For this session, you should have read pages 255 through 298 in this particular book. If you're not reading from this particular book, then you need to read to uh, the last sentence of the last chapter you need to read to is, he is dead. So look for he is dead and then stop reading. Um, and before we get into it, as always, I just want to let you know we got some pretty sexy Children of Dune Club merch for your ass at my store, danicaxix.bigcartel.com. We got the Back to School Dune Pack for the Dune lover in your life. That includes a signed Bene Gesserit notebook, a Chome sticky notebook, a Souk School syringe pen, a uh, uncensored <laughs> Abomination Alia sexy bookmark, a uh, Spacing Guild highlighter, Mintat Juice of Safu flavored lip balm, vegan lip balm, a Litany Against Fear prayer card, a three-inch 19 Academy sticker, and a 19 Academy acceptance letter. So here's some of these sexy products. I love this chapstick. I'm not even like, I'm not even playing, dog. This is so good. I've been using these fucking stickies like a motherfucker. Uh, here's that sexy bookmark. You can also get that separately if you just want the bookmark. Uh, also, we have this Spice Melange is smuggled straight from the Smuggler's Cove, straight from Fondac. <laughs> We've got the Spice Melange lip balm, CBD, CBD, straight from Arrakis. Um, and then we also have the uh, Dune Club enamel pin with Litany Against Fear prayer card. And then a signed and personalized 8x10 Abomination Alia photo for sale. So get on it. Support this free class. DanicaXIX.BigCartel.com. Look at all that sexy fucking merch. Whoa, this is my best merch drop yet. I've been wanting to make the Back to School Doom Pack for years. I finally did it. All right, back to the book. Back to the book. Uh, first, let's do a recap of session six. So plans are in motion. All right, plans are in motion. The lady Jessica, now in hiding, takes a chance and takes off with Duncan Idaho, only to be captured by him and escorted as a prisoner to House Carino. Meanwhile, on Seleucus Secundus, when Sissia lets her son in on her tiger assassination plot, much to Faradin's chagrin, but he rolls with it. Later, he has a meeting with Tyek and his mother to discuss what to do with their dangerous new captive. Back on Arrakis, the twins are busy escaping the laws of tigers, but not without receiving some permanent scars before killing the cats and having to part ways. Using auto-hypnosis, Ganima builds a version of herself who has witnessed her brother's death. Fun fact, this overcomes the inner horde as a curious side effect. Uh, and then she heads back to Siege Tabar, where she finds and kills the traitor Fremen who released the tigers and captures his companion. All right. All right. Back to Arrakis, kids. Here we go. Chapter 25, Jessica takes a chance on Duncan Idaho. So, Lady J is hiding out with that Fata Keen that, you know, she left the hall with all those Fata Keen. She's like, form up, Fata Keen. We got to get the fuck out of here. She went with Al Fali, and they are all now considered enemies of the state by the priesthood. They're hiding out of this siege, which is hated by the priesthood because they refused to profit from the religion of Muad'Dib. And instead, they had this scheme. They were going to breed these dogs as big as ponies to be like, I don't know, fucking awesome giant dogs that you could like, that could protect your kids and stuff. And then they could ride around on them. But then like the dogs were like poisoned. Their whole scheme was fucked up when the dogs all died and they were poisoned probably by the priesthood because they're fucking assholes. And uh, Jessica's thinking to herself, man, Alia is really testing her control over the Fremen. Like, she believes she has control over the Fremen because she has control over the priesthood. But uh, the Fremen kind of, like, I, they're not really the, they're kind of fighters. So she's risking, like, all-out civil war on Arrakis right now. This is a real gamble. And uh, she sent a message to Stilgar. And she said, my daughter is possessed and must be put to the trial. So she totally was like, hey, this is, this is the deal, guys. And uh, she hears that Alia has ordered to have the twins. She, she told Stilgar, give me the fucking twins. And then the twins are missing. They're like, oh, no, the twins are fucking missing. Stilgar's out there looking for her. She's like, well, maybe, 
it's a ruse, but that's not really Stilgar's fucking deal. Like, they're probably really missing. Holy shit. And, uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's a mess. It's a real mess. So also another thing when she was, when she was sitting there thinking, uh, she was thinking about Alia, you know, risking the civil war and just like risking all this gambling, all this shit on her rightness. And she thinks of this Bene Gesserit axiom. It, it comes into her mind. It says, if you focus your awareness only upon your own rightness, then you invite the forces of opposition to overwhelm you. This is a common error. Even I, your teacher, have made it. Oh, I love that. That's so good. Just, it's so relevant to all of us every day, <laughs> everyone around us. If you focus your awareness only upon your own rightness, then you invite the forces of opposition to overwhelm you. And that's what I feel like a lot of motherfuckers around me are doing. They're just like, I'm right. I'm right. And it doesn't matter. And it's just like, good luck with that, dude. Good luck with that. Anyways, moving on. Uh, she, while she's in this siege, she also notices there's these two younger Fremen who are hanging out and she, uh, thinks to herself, they were non-thinkers attaching themselves to any fancied power for the identity which this gave them. Without a reflection from her, they were empty. Thus, they were dangerous. And like, oh my God, when I read this, I was just like, I don't know, I just, being in LA and you just see so many non-thinkers who just attach themselves to any fancied power for the identity that it gives them and that they are empty and I was just like damn and those people are dangerous too like because if you don't appease them they will turn on you you know it's just like whoa like I just I love that I love that so much I thought that was just like such a real thing non-thinkers attaching themselves to any fancied power for the identity which this gave them oh oh chills I've seen it I've witnessed it scary it's real um so anyways duncan shows up to the siege and uh again he's wearing his you know house atreides uniform and this this is where they say it's it's 14 centuries old it hasn't changed in over a thousand years this is like i love the dune universe where like shit's like we just have plasteel and we've been and it's the best and we don't need to make new materials and we just have this for thousands of years and that's what we use laser guns we just use these OK, like there's not like this constant innovation that's going on. Like there's not they're just like we've settled and like this is good. We, we like this. This this works for us. Um, anyways, and so she's you know, she's like, Gosh, should I trust Duncan? Like, I mean, that's Ollie's husband. I don't know. Like, this is kind of. And she's like, fine, I'll let him in. I'll talk to him. And she's talking to him. She says, I've spent much of this night reviewing the mistakes I've made with my daughter. And then he says, they were many, and I shared in most of them. And then she says, I wanted to leave this place. You, you wanted a girl you saw as a younger version of me. And I was like, oh, shit. Damn. Like, I mean, she's not wrong, but like, whoa. And Duncan just kind of like takes it. He's like, mm, yeah. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, another really wonderful thing that she says is that Alia grasps the power firmly now. One uses power by grasping it lightly. To grasp too strongly is to be taken over by power and thus to become its victim. Another bunch of wisdom right there. You know, another bunch of wisdom right there. Like you, you gotta, you gotta have a light touch. Okay. As a ruler, you gotta, you gotta have that light touch. Like you, you try, you holding on too hard. Like you're going to piss a bunch of people off and they're going to fucking turn on you. Like, and you're going to go mad with power. Again, another thing I've seen where people get a little bit of power and then they go fucking crazy with it. And then they're just like, oh, I can do whatever the fuck I want. And then they fuck up. And then it just, it, it they become the victim of power. It's crazy. Again, another another real observation by the Lady Jessica. Um, so she's like, hey, uh, so did you come here to abduct me? You know, like I already know about your little abduction plot. And he's like, Ooh, I have to kind of make it look like an abdu abduction plot. I did tell Ollie I was going to do that, but I'm not really here for her. So, and Jessica's like, fine, I'll go along with your abduction plot. That's fine. And so, uh, and Alpha Lee's like, oh, I don't know, Jessica. Like, uh, should you go with this fucking guy? Like, uh, that's the husband of the cone teen. But he, she's like, fine, uh, it's fine. Duncan's cool. So they get in the ornithopter. And, uh, and I love, I love that, like, when he says, she's like, were you followed? He's like, no, I flew lower than the dune tops. And it's like, oh, they have the sand in the Arrakis desert is so high that you can fly below the tops of the dunes. They're so big. Like, and I was just like, oh, 
that's so epic thinking about that i love that um and like so they're getting an ornithopter and like she's like she's like looking at him she's thinking about how like i I remember seeing you die i remember seeing blood like coming out of your fucking head like squirting out of your fucking head you know it's just like how much of a trip would that be to be like well i guess i'm flying with you i remember when you fucking died like uh so weird um and then i love this thing she goes um it's been a long time since you've flown me, Duncan. And I was just like, oh, that's low-key hot. Like, there's some fucking, there's some tension here just a little bit. Uh, and so they're up in the air. And she's like, where are you taking me? Uh, so where are we going? You know, what's the deal? And he's like, surprise, bitch. And, like, she's, like, wrapped up, you know. She's, like, saran wrapped in this shit. And uh, he's like, I'm taking you to Farad. And we're going to, we're going to fucking House Carino. And uh, she's like, what? You're obeying Alia? And he's like, no, man. I'm obeying, I'm obeying the preacher. Okay, we're doing the preacher's bidding right now. She's like, is the preacher my son? He's like, I don't know. And then she thinks, she's like, Leto said I would find an interesting student. Shit. Maybe it's Farad'in. Maybe it's fucking Farad'in. Um, next, let's go to, let's talk about Farad'in for just a minute. When Sissia confesses her plot to Farad'in, her son. So she's like, she like tells him all about it. He's like, there goes all my free time. He's really annoyed about it. He's just like, I, I, you did this for me. Like, fuck fuck you. Like, you didn't consult me on this. Um, He figures out that she knew about the preacher. He's like, God damn it. My mom sucks. Uh, Another really cool thing about Farad, though, that we find out is that his father's name is Dalek. And he's related to Count Hazemir Fenring. Oh, oh, I know. We never got enough Fenring. I know, I personally never got enough fucking Hazemir Fenring, but I'm so ex- I just get a little, just anything. I was just like, oh, he's related to Fenring. Oh, I fucking love it. Um, so that was, that was a really cool revelation. I was really excited about that. Um, and, uh, and so Faradin like being like really, he's a very smart fucking kid. And he's like, you know, mom, Tayek used to call you my princess. And now he calls you my lady. And like, what the fuck's up with that? And she's like, you know what? We're just we're just doing that so people will think that we've given up our given up on uh, getting our, our power back. You know? And he's like, nobody nobody's gonna believe that. Shut up! You're so full of shit. Like, who who would believe that, mom? Like, you're the worst. Um, nobody is that dumb. He starts playing game mind games with his mom. He starts directing her thoughts. He's like, she's like, oh, well, I don't know why Alia's doing this. He's like, Alia wants power, duh. Like, what are you talking about? And she's like, but I did this for you. He's like, you did not do this for me. You did this for House Carino. Uh, and I know how you train those tigers. And you're gross. All right? You're fucking that bitch Carol Baskins. You know, it's just like, you're gross. You, you I don't like this. Like, what you did. I'm dis- personally disgusted by your fucking plot here. Like, how you train these tigers. Like, disgusting and she's like worried for how many she's like oh no is he gonna denounce me like oh no but then he's like dismisses her he's like you know what? i'm gonna go to the library you know i suddenly have an interest in carino history so i'll be back mom and um and i love that at the end he says uh or he's thinking this new living history which he felt gathering around him possessed a sense of plunging into an irreversible future Faradin could feel himself driven now by the desires of all those whose fortunes rode with him. He found it strange that he could not pin down his own desires in this. And I was just like, oh, this kid, like, it's just so much power and responsibility is on his shoulders. Like, all these people's livelihoods and honor and all this bullshit, you know, are all tied up with, like, him And it's just like, oh, what a burden, you know, oh, what a fucking burden. And I've definitely like, I don't know, I I feel like I've kind of been there in times past, you know, where it's like, oh, you have a manager and you you have this other person, you have this other person and everybody needs you to do this thing so they can all fucking get paid, you know, but nobody really cares what you want to do. And it's just like everyone's just kind of using you so that they can get shit. And it's just like sucks, dude. It's just like fucking sucks. I was like, damn, I love Farad, and I think he's fucking rad. I'm, I'm excited to talk about him in uh, another upcoming chapter. But first, let's go back to Arrakis. Let's go to the tiger attack. Uh, Beans, Beans, is he talking about tigers, Mom? Beans came back. She's like, you talking about tigers? That's my favorite part of the book. I'm a cat, you know. You can ask me questions about cat behavior. I know all about it, Mom. I know all about it. You want to say anything to the people? You want to say anything? No, I don't want to. 
Yeah, we're talking about tigers. My favorite part in the book. <laughs> uh, okay, so... All right, enough, enough of that beans, enough of that beautiful bean footage. Let's get back. Uh, so, okay, so the twins, they, they, they dive into this little crevasse, you know, and, uh, and so, and Gani's stuck, and, like, Lido's like, cool, oh, bitch, like, pulling her arms, and he gets her down in there, but not before she gets, like, raked by a tiger claw on her leg, fucks up her still suit, and uh, it's funny to me, too, that, like, these big cats are, like, putting their paw you know like getting their paw down there like trying to like swipe at them it's like again cat behavior i mean beans does that shit all the time there's like a little bug in some little deal and she's like putting her little paw in there trying to get it and um and so leto gets one of them one of them was a little paw swiping around and so he has this poison chris knife he gets him and then the fucking here's the cat die and tumble down the deal but then there's another cat so they're like all right like Ghani is like, okay, I, I need to get this one because I'm already hurt. And we can't have you get hurt because you I'm going to have to be the one that goes back. If you get hurt, hurt then I'm not going to be able to leave you. And it's just it's not going to be good. So, like, I got to do this. Lito's like, let's just use the Mala pistol. He's like, I don't want the people to know we have a Mala pistol in case we have to fucking shoot them. So we need to we can't blow our load here. So give me the knife. Let me fucking do this, Lito. He's like, okay, fine. So Ghani gets up there, and again, like the 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 cat isn't doing the paw thing, but he like wants she wants to get it, so she starts like teasing him with the knife, like, oh, there's something in here moving, and uh, and the cat goes for the bait, fucking goes for it, and then uh, she gets that guy too, but not before getting ripped open from like elbow to like almost to her wrist, uh, which I know about that beans earlier this year. She fucked my shit up. I look like a cutter. I've got this fucked up scar on my wrist. You can kind of see it there. Uh, you know, it's it's a bummer, man. <laughs> so she, got, she got real fucked up. But I love that when she did it, she yells, she yells, Takwa! Just like the price of freedom. You know, it's like, yes, I love it. You're so, she's so spicy. Um, so Lido bandages her up, makes it look shitty like she did it herself. And then they must now separate. They have to, uh, Lido and Ghani must now separate, going their own way into uniqueness, where the sharing of daily experiences would never again unite them as they once had been united. Never again would they be as one, sharing knowledge which no one else could understand. And it's like, oh, what intimacy. Like, I think that humans, like, there's a real lack of intimacy in our digital age. And these two are just, like, so, like, they have such... And I'm talking about, like, spiritual intimacy here. I'm not talking about physical intimacy. I'm talking about spiritual, mental, emotional intimacy. You know, we all crave it. And these two, like, they're so different than everybody. They're so, they're the next step in human evolution. You know, they're fucking mutants. And, like, and like they have each other to, to share with. And now they've got to break apart. And it's just like, oh, man, that's such a fucking bummer. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so bad for them, you know. But they know they must do it. And he's like, get back. Get Hera to hide you. Uh, I'm going to go to Fondak, which is Jackarudu. They figure it out. So how do you, how do you hide? How do you hide uh, Jackarudu, this, this fucking mythical place? You hide it in plain sight. That's right. You rename it. You rename it Fondak. <laughs> the smugglers did just that. Uh, that's where the smugglers fucking hang out. And so that's, uh, that is the mythical Jackarudu city where the water stealers live. And they're drawing out their last moments. And then Ganima realized she was seeing him through a veil of time, looking at an older Lido. And then she goes, ride swiftly, my old friend. And he says, I'll, or yeah, ride swiftly, my old friend. I love how she calls him her old friend. You know, because they're both, like, they know they're old. Like, they're millions of years old. It's just like, ugh. And then he's like, I'll come back to you my only friend and I was just like oh my heart I just love these fucking two so much uh and I also I love that she like looking at him and, and looking at an older Leto I don't know if you've ever done that I've done that as an artist sometimes I look at people and like they're talking to me or like maybe not talking to me maybe I'm just looking at them across the way maybe they're older and I just like see them as they were when they were younger you know I'm just like oh I can see what you look like when you were younger or sometimes when they're younger, you look at them like, oh, I see what you're going to look like when you're older. I don't know why it happens, but sometimes it just happens where you're just like, oh, I, I see what's going on here. Um, so anyways, back on track. Uh, Ganima steeled herself then for what she had to do. Leto must be dead to her. She had to make herself believe it. 
There could be no Jackarudu in her mind, no brother out there seeking a place lost in Fremen mythology. From this point onward, she could not think of Leto as alive. She must condition herself to react out of a total belief that her brother was dead, killed here by Laza tigers. Not many humans could fool a soothsayer or truthsayer, but she knew she could do it, might have to do it. The multi-lives she and Leto shared had taught them the way, a hypnotic process old in Sheba's time. Although she might be the only human alive who could recall Sheba as a reality. The deep compulsions, which had been designed with care and for a long time after Leto had gone, Ganima reworked her self-awareness, building the lonely sister, the surviving twin, until it was a believable totality. As she did this, she found the inner world becoming silent, blanked away from intrusion into her consciousness. It was a side effect she had not expected. <gasps> Has Ganima figured out a way around abomination? <gasps> um, it seems so. It seems so. Somehow by building this secondary false persona and m inhabiting this space, it shuts out. I guess it's like since she built this whole new persona for herself, like the old persona, that's where like she was being intruded upon. The new persona, for whatever reason the inner horde is like become silent like controllable like they're not up in her ass all the time and it's just like oh very cool uh we're going to talk more about that later on in the book uh and so now she she leaves for siege to bar to tell everyone how her brother had perished saving her from the tigers uh so let's go to yeah, George Costanza, Caligula party planner. It's not a lie if you believe it. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, and it's funny too, because it's like, oh, she's doing all this stuff. And when I was writing this, I was like thinking about people who, I know plenty of people who are able to believe their own lies. So I know plenty of people who fucking deceive themselves. And they're like, oh no, this is really what happened. And you're like, I was there. Like, I know that didn't happen. And they're like, no, 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 no. This is what I, fucking what happened. Like, there's so many people uh, that do that. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, anyways, uh, chapter 28, the Carinos discuss what to do with Lady Jessica. Water Tiger, I love your George Costanza emo. That's super cute. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let's, let's go to chapter 28. Now, chapter 28 starts with one of my favorite Dune quotes. And there's so many. I know I say, I'm sure I say that every fucking time, but there's so many amazing Dune quotes. I just can't not love all of them there's so many fucking good ones it's like just so full of wisdom this one and i've retweeted this plenty of times on twitter there's like a dune bot quote or a dune quote bot that i'm like constantly retweeting i retweeted some earlier today actually uh but it says governments if they endure always tend increasingly toward ar aristocratic forms no government in history has been known to evade this pattern. And as the aristocracy develops, government tends more and more to act exclusively in the interests of the ruling class. Whether that class be hereditary royalty, oligarchs of financial empires, or entrenched bureaucracy. Boom. He just said it. <laughs> he just said it. We're all thinking it. Frank Herbert fucking said it. He wrote it down and he published it like a motherfucker. And now I'm reading it to you. Uh, it's true, okay? Governments, if they endure, always tend increasingly towards aristocratic forms. No government in history has been known to evade this motherfucking pattern. This is a pattern. This happens every fucking time. You have a government. They're fucking, at first it's fucking cool. And then as it continues, you have these fucking dickheads who take it over, ruin it for everybody, and then uh, they have the government acting more and more exclusively in their own interests. They become a ruling class. And it's like whether that class be hereditary royalty. So whether it's kings and queens. Whether it's oligarchs of financial empires. So whether it's Amazon or Google. Okay. Whether it's entrenched bureaucracy. So whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans. Like, it's just like these motherfuckers don't give a shit. And that's where we're at right now with American government. Uh, that's exactly where we're at right now. Uh, they don't fucking work for us. I'll tell you that. They don't work for the common man. They work for their own bullshit ends and uh, fuck career politicians. I'm just going to put that out there. Fuck them. 
uh, you know, just fuck that shit. So just just letting you know how I feel. Just letting you know. Get a little political here. It's political year. That's that's my fucking that's my two cents. So yeah, end of the American Empire, perhaps end of the American Empire as we've known it. It will evolve. What goes down, you know, must come up. Like everything's a fucking cycle. So uh, we're in a very transitional, weird time. There'll be some really shitty things that come out of it. There'll be some really great things that come out of it. So we'll see how things shake out. You know, I'm just hoping we don't end up with uh, Civil War Two. I'm laying the groundwork to move to Japan. So uh, if that happens, I'm just going to dip out. Be like, you guys go ahead and blow each other's heads off. Peace. I'm out. I'm going to Japan. See ya. Fuck off. See ya. Like, I'm out. Bye. Like, I don't have time for this shit. You guys want to play Call of Duty for real because you just play too many video games. And you all feel useless and you just want to kill each other. Like, go ahead. But I'm not going to be here for it. So <laughs> let's move on. When Sissia uh, has been taken down a peg. All right. So once she told Farad about this plan, he's like, OK, fine. If you're going to make me if you're trying to make me the emperor, then fine, bitch. I'm going to be above you. I'm going to do this. I'm doing this thing now. OK. And uh, Farad's taken over. Duncan Idaho showed up with Lady Jessica. Uh, Taya, Quincycia and Farad all talk in his room, which, again, I loved his room. I loved his room. It was so cute where it is lined with actual books because they don't they don't have like don't have like actual books you know <laughs> like they have like all these other ways of like like the shiga wire uh, the shiga wire reels mnemonic amplifiers data blocks player spools uh he's got all these fucking things but i love that he's such like a little bookworm he's like a little nerd <laughs> i love farad and i have like i think he's so cute i think he's such a fucking sweetheart and then i like the chairs the sensiform floaters designed for unobtrusive comfort i would buy the fuck out of a sensiform floater i don't even like give me one right now sight unseen like yes like i want to be just sit and read my book and my fucking sensiform floater like i'm down anyways so duncan wants asylum for jessica so they're like what, what does he say what does he say he's like well he says he wants asylum and they were like, well, what the fuck's going on in Iraq? And they're like, well, it seems like there might be civil war. And they're like, eh, is, it, is this a ruse? Are we getting played here? Like, I don't fucking know. They're like, they're like, well, Javid, I mean, he's been a reliable source of information. And like, Farad's like, mom, Javid is obviously a double agent. And she's like, well, I don't know. He's been really cool. And he's like, why don't you shut the fuck up, mom? And I'll, I'll explain to you later how I know that because it's really obvious. So why don't you just like stop talking right now? And, uh, and then later he's like, well, what is the lady Jessica's value? Like, can we exchange her for something of greater value? Like, later? Like, I guess we could consider her just, like, money in the bank. Uh, but Tyke is like, yeah, but, like, she is dangerous. Like, she is one of the most dangerous people in the fucking empire. So, like, I don't know. And then when Sissy is like, yeah, she might seduce you. Fucking Irulan. She was showing me some of her whore tricks that the BG taught her, you know, but like whatever. And like Fran's like, she's a bit old for that mom. Like she's like, ah, she could do it. You know, it's just like, don't trust the BG. Um, and Farhan thinks to himself, playing this game to restore house uh, Kareen, to, to restore the house of Karino's high seat of power both attracted him and repelled him. How attractive it remained, the urge to retire from this game into his preferred pursuits historical research how to rule Seleucus Secundus restoring the Sardaukar like he's got plenty of things he could be doing he's got a whole planet it's like I got a whole planet okay I could be focusing on just like how to get the Sardaukar back getting this planet going doing my research you know he just wants to do his research I feel you but he's also like well the empire is like an even bigger more glamorous instrument of power and he's also been studying Paul Atreides and he's like dude, I want to be like Paul. Like, I want to, like, fuck shit up like Paul. You know, like, he's definitely, he, he's like, yeah, it'd be cool to restore the honor of House Carino, just like Paul restored the honor of House Atreides. So he's like, I think we should inquire further. Uh, when we think we know something, that's precisely the moment when we should look deeper into a thing. And I was like, damn, Farad is so wise. So wise. I think we could all take that into account into our daily lives when you think you know something that's precisely the moment you should look deeper into it you know like so true and i love that he uses this as above so below logic so he starts talking about still suits you know he's like what what's what is the you know fucking quintessential arrakis fremen cultural thing a still suit okay these things have become so popular uh, that people wear fake ones around in the empire, you know, like people just like wear fake ones because, you know, you always kind of copy your conqueror. 
and hey beans and um and so he's he's like makes this really astute observation like okay so what is a still suit it's a very it's a conservative object it conserves your body's moisture so if the atreides make a mistake it's going to be a conservative one because like beans beans please ma'am please ma'am we're please ma'am we're in the middle of class ma'am please thank you okay so <laughs> so uh yeah, so I love his as above, so below things. Like, looks at the even the fashion of a planet, and then he's like, "Oh, you know, this means that that this, you know, this is this has got there's a connection here. Everything's connected. Everything's connected. Uh, the influence of a planet upon the mass unconsciousness of its inhabitants has never been fully appreciated." He says. So I'm like, "Yes, as above, so below. So cool. I love his thinking here." Uh, we begin their defeat by the kinds of stress we introduce into their society. That's a very powerful tool, stress, and the lack of it is important too. Did you not mark how the Atreides helped things grow soft and easy here? Because Seleucus Secundus is kind of like Arrakis. It's a very punishing planet. That's why, like, the Sardaukar are trained there, and that's why they're so badass, is because they live on this fucked up planet, right? But, like, when Shaddam IV got fucking booted into exile, Atreides was like, I'm going to make your planet into a paradise planet because he wants to make them fucking soft. And how do you do that? By fucking making a paradise planet. I mean, it's just like, look at fucking Southern California. You know, it's just like all these soft motherfuckers everywhere. And it's like the weather's perfect all the time. Like, it's just like super nice, like all the time. And it's like, because of that, you have all these really soft fucking people who are just like disconnected from reality because uh, they don't have to like fight nature. You know, you don't have to fight winter every fucking year. So, like, people just get so disconnected. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And so he ends with, we, you know, they end their meeting when Sissy is like, I agree with Farad and we need more info. Uh, and uh, and then Farad's like, but will we know <laughs> when we've passed the point of no return? And Tyek's like, if you ask me, we've already passed it. Like, if you ask me, like, we're already, like, way past that shit. And uh, Farad laughs and is like, when we come to the end of our rope, that's an important place to recognize. And again, more wisdom out of Farad. I, I just, I think Farad and Carino is just such an interesting, cute little character. I would like more, uh, I, I wish he would like, I wish Frank Herbert would like, tell me what it looks like. You know, like, give me some more, like, give me some more fucking details. Give me those details, Frank Herbert. But you know fucking Herbert. He's like, nah, you gotta figure it out on your own. Beans, would you like to hang out again? Beans is here again. Hold on. All right, so we're going to do round two of Beans. Beans, what did you think? She's like, I thought that tiger plot was pretty, was pretty crazy. <laughs> okay, anything else? Anything else? Got anything else to say? Okay, okay. Let's have your moment. All right, she's like, I'm hungry. I want a food pouch. It's 4.30. You're not getting a food pouch yet. So let's go to our last chapter. Ganima makes it back to Siege Tabar. Uh, another header that I loved was uh, for this chapter. In this age when the means of human transport includes devices which can span the deeps of space and trans time and other devices which can carry men swiftly over virtually impassable planetary surfaces, it seems odd to think of attempting long journeys afoot. Yet this remains the primary means of travel on Arrakis, a fact attributed partly to preference and partly to the brutal treatment of this planet that this planet reserves for anything mechanical. In the strictures of Arrakis, human flesh remains the most durable and reliable resource for the Hodge. Perhaps it is the implicit awareness of this fact which makes Arrakis the ultimate mirror of the soul. I was thinking about walking. It's very humbling. You know, we have to walk somewhere because like we're, we love our illusions and we love our feelings of power and just like you get in the car and you zip around or you get on the bird scooter and you zip around, you know, and you're like, yeah, ha, ha, I'm getting here so fast. Look at me. I'm taking shortcuts. I'm making, I'm efficient as fuck. But then like there's something that happens when you're on foot, you know, and you're just, you're just humbled and you just know like, hey, like, <laughs> like, Man, life on Earth, huh? It's kind of hard. Like, it's kind of tough. Like, can you imagine, like, not having, like, oh, man, you have to walk everywhere? I went on a, uh, I went to a, a desert planet earlier this year. I went to Sedona, Arizona for a little retreat. I was, I was kind of miserable. I was kind of depressed. And uh, I needed to get away. And while I was there, I didn't have a car. There was, there was no Ubers 
there. It was like, it, you're lucky if you can find an Uber. And I just resolved myself to walk everywhere. I was just like, I'm just going to walk everywhere. I'm going to walk to get my breakfast and walk to get my lunch and walk to get my dinner. And I'm going to fucking go walk up a fucking mountain. And uh, I'm just going to walk everywhere. I'm just going to walk everywhere. And I did. And it was very humbling. And it was a very wonderful experience. Uh, and it was it made me feel a lot better by the end of it. And it really helped me get all, all this shit out of my system. You know, it was really good for me. So I highly recommend, highly recommend walking uh, when you have the chance. It's good for, it is the ultimate mirror of the soul. So anyways, all right, Ghani is back. She is outside the siege. Uh, and she's pissed. She's like, Leto's dead. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fuck shit up. I am so mad right now. Like, it's fucking crazy. And she thinks to herself, she understood what was said about Fremen, that they were not supposed to have a conscience having lost it in a burning revenge against those who had driven them from planet to planet in the long wandering that was foolishness of course only the rawest primitive had no conscience fremen possessed a highly evolved conscience which centered on their own welfare as a people it was also or it was only to outsiders that they seemed brutish just as outsiders appeared brutish to fremen every fremen knew very well that he could do a brutal thing and feel no guilt Fremen did not feel guilt for the same things that, ar that aroused such feelings in others. And I thought that was a really cool statement um, about different cultures, where a lot of times as an outsider, you see another culture and you see how they act and you think, oh, you know, that's terrible. But then it's like, is it, you know, like, because they think they see us and they think we're terrible. You know, it's like, it's like, you have to realize this. Like, maybe they just have a different perspective on things. Like, yes, the Fremen seem like a very brutal people but it, there's a point to it it's not just like oh we just kill people we just like force blind people in the desert because we're dicks it's like no because they have a fucking tribe and it's so hard to live here that they cannot afford to have blind people in their crew and take care of them like they can't afford the energy to do it they don't have it so it's like if you're blinded you gotta go it's nothing personal it's just like it's for the good of the tribe and uh, i thought that was really I thought that was really interesting. I really, I really liked that. I really liked that. Um, so Ghani's thinking, she's like, I want Faradin dead. I want to see his blood spill at my fucking feet. I know who did this. It was Faradin. I want to fucking kill him. So it's like, oh man, oh, that's not good. You don't want Ghani I wanting to see your blood. And uh, she's hanging out. She sees this light coming out of this, coming out of the seat. Someone's coming out of the seat or whatever. And she's like, she's like, what the fuck? You know, like, why is there light spilling out everywhere? That's that's not siege etiquette, okay? Uh, the ways of the lace shirt Fremen were to be found everywhere. The lace shirt Fremen. What a fucking burn, city Fremen. Uh, she sees a man and a woman kind of hanging out in this in this doorway with this light coming out of it. And she recognizes the man as Palimbasha, a grandson of a knave whose sons had fallen in Atreides' surface and in Atreides' service. And she sees that he's wearing the tiger transmitter. So that's the traitor. So there was someone who was in league with House Carino, who was with the Fremen, who was in the siege, watching these kids and like waiting for his fucking moment when they were alone to release these motherfucking tigers. And she thinks to herself, Palimbasha taught in the siege school mathematics. The man was a mathematical bore. I was like, whoa. He had attempted to explain Wadib through mathematics until censured by the priesthood. He was a mind slaver. And his enslaving process could be understood with extreme simplicity. He transferred technical knowledge without a transfer of values. What a burn. <laughs> what a burn. Uh, she's like, God, I should have known this guy sucks. I should I should have known this. This guy sucks. I should have known. Uh, and he also aspires to be a political governor, governor under the regency. And she thinks to herself, she summons this ancient memory of a, a priestess of Jauf captured in Assyria by Sennacherib. Sennacherib. Uh, I actually, I looked it up. I was like, priestess of Jauf. Is that a thing? I couldn't find anything on the internet. 
and uh, I couldn't find anything. No one, no, no other Dune fans could find it either. I went on some fucking Dune, Dune boards and like, no, I was like, everyone's like, Priestess of Jalf, where did he get that from? No one could figure it out. Uh, if anyone in the, if anyone in the chat knows what the fuck that's about, let us know. I couldn't find it. Also, uh, you know, a hypnotic compulsion earlier that was like old in Sheba's time. It's like Sheba was a really ancient it's probably in Ethiopia. Nobody knows if it was quite real or not. Who knows? But it's like the Queen of Sheba comes to King Solomon to his court and like her and Solomon kind of have a thing. And uh, but there was nothing about like auto hypnotic compulsions. Like I couldn't find anything for that either. So I tried, guys. I couldn't find anything. Um, so anyways, she makes a blow dart instrument out of a sand snorkel, <laughs> which is awesome. She's like, I'm going to make a blow dart and I'm going to poison tip this needle. And I'm going to fuck up this guy. She takes out Palimbasha. She makes... Uh, and then she shows up uh, next to the lady that he's with. And she's like, make no sudden moves, Mariz. My knife is poisoned. You may let go of Palimbasha now. He's dead. So she got she got one. She's getting ready to get another one. This little girl is a punishing little person. Uh, so I would... Uh, <laughs> Be careful, everyone. Be careful. She's back. Let's see here. Mark Jake says, what does Senacherib mean? From Akkadian, the meaning sin has replaced my lost brother. From the god's name sin combined with the plural form of ahu, meaning brother, and rebu, meaning to replace. This was the name of a 7th century BC Assyrian king who destroyed Babylon. He appears in the Old Testament. Um, nice. <laughs> nice. I like that. Okay, so she, Sin replaces my lost brother. Sin has replaced my lost brother. Okay. I'll take that. I mean, there's, there's a connection there. I don't know what the Priestess of Jalf connection is, but that, I, that I can understand. I mean, that, that's a loose, a loose thing. Thank you, Mark Jake, for looking that up for us. So, for next session, uh, you want to read page 255 to 298. <laughs> and if you're not reading in this book, uh, you can read to the sentence and they can read it in only one way. So that is uh, read to that sentence if you are reading from a different book. Um, so, yeah. So that's it today for Children of Dune Club Session 6. Thank you so much for coming back to Arrakis with me. Uh, let's take a break. And when we come back, we will be doing some questions and answers. That's right. We'll be doing some questions and answers, taking questions from our patrons on Patreon, and then talking to you lovely, beautiful people in the Twitch chat. We will be right back. 19 Academy thanks these lovely people for all their generosity and support on patreon.com slash Danica XIX. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, ring the bell, and tell your friends. You can join me live on twitch.tv slash Danica XIX and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Danica XIX. Support for 19 Academy comes from viewers like you on patreon.com slash Danica XIX.